Hello, AP Stats. I hope you guys are having a great day. Um, today we're going to be starting 12.2, which is a little different from our normal. The past like three chapters have been hypothesis tests and confidence intervals. Um, this deviates a little bit. Um, we're still focusing on scatter plots, um, but we're looking a little bit it's something a little bit different. So, um, what we're going to be doing today is transforming um, data to make inferences about nonlinear data. So, remember when you started making hypothesis tests for scatter plots, um, your conditions are the liner conditions, right? Linear, independent, normal, um, equal variance, and random. And the question that we're going to answer today is, what do we do if the data isn't normal? Because sometimes, unfortunately, we just don't have linear data. <gasps> no, God, why? The nifty thing is, we can make it linear. Yay! Yeah! All right, so we're going to do this with an example to start. Um, so you were extra bored one day and decided to make a bunch of Play-Doh bouncy balls. You're curious enough to observe the relationship between the volumes of the balls versus the lengths. Um, and then you had the following data. Okay, so we have a table with the data and we have a nice, beautiful graph. And it is clear that this is not a linear relationship. Um, and so you should not fit it with a line, at least not yet. So the question is, how do you think we can transform the data so that we might get a linear relationship? And that's what we're going to be answering in this video. So in this particular set of data, you might think because volume is a cubic measurement and diameter is a degree one measurement, you might think that this graph is approximately a third degree polynomial, which is probably a really good guess, okay? Um, and so that's where we're gonna be in this first scenario, if it's a power relationship. So basically, you have, um, the function is y equals a constant times x to a power. Um, it's probably what this is in this case. Okay, you have two separate options. The first option is try to guess which power it is. Um, in this case, we would probably guess it's a third degree power. Um, and then, so instead of graphing x versus y, where you see this curved relationship, you would instead graph um, x to the third versus y, or x to whatever the power is that you think the relationship is. Because if the function is in fact a cubic relationship, then the graph of x cubed versus y is going to be linear because you're going to have something like y equals a constant times x to the third. And so the relationship between x to the third and y is linear. So you would end up with a graph that kind of looks a little more linear. You could also actually graph um, the nth root of y versus x and in this case, this is a, we think this is a cubic, um, and so we would graph the cube root of y versus x. Because again, if you have a cubic relationship, and so say you start out with y equals ax cubed, and you cube root both, okay, let's divide both sides by a first, so you have one over a times y equals x cubed, right? And you take the cube root of both sides, then you end up getting x, is linearly related to the cube root of y, right? Because you end up with, you know, the cube root of one over a is gonna be your constant times the cube root of y is at, equal to x. So that is still a linear relationship between those two variables. The other option, and I would recommend this a little bit more because you're not necessarily gonna know what power function that you have, right? You're not going to know, you probably won't know if it's a cubic or quadratic or a fifth root or a tenth root. You just don't know. Um, and so I would recommend using the second one a little bit more often. 
Um, but either one will work for power functions. So the second option is graph and analyze the log of x versus the log of y. Um, you can use any base, base 10 and e, right, the natural log are the most common ones. Um, and the reason why is that if you start out with y equals ax to the n, and you take the log of both sides, we have the natural log of y equals the natural log of ax to the n, and you can use some of your funky log rules. So um, remember that if you have two things multiplied together inside a log, you can break it up into two things, uh, two separate logs added together. So then you have the natural log of y equals natural log of a plus natural log of x to the n. Then you can use the power rule and take that n and bring it out front. So then you have natural log of y equals log a plus n log x. Now keep in mind, natural log of a, just a constant. n, just a constant. And so if you are graphing log x versus log y, what you really have is some, I'm just going to call it big Y, right, equals some constant a plus some constant times some variable is really what you have going on as long as you're graphing log x versus log y. So when you graph the natural log of x versus natural log of y or log base 10 or log base whatever you're using then you end up with a linear relationship between those two variables. Voila! Okay, in a different type of scenario what if you have uh, data that displays more of an exponential relationship, exponential growth, for example. Um, a lot of times populations of rabbits might display some sort of uh, an exponential relationship. <laughs> um, so anyways, new function, y equals a and then b to the power of x, right? a and b are both constants. Um, then you would always want to transform with logs because that's the only way to get x out of the exponent. And so what you end up having to graph is log y just versus x because if you start out with y equals a b to the x, you take the log of both sides. Again, you can split up the right hand side as log a plus log of b to the x. Take the x out of the exponent. So now I have log y equals log a plus x log b. Um, and remember, log a, just a constant, log b, just a constant. So really what you have is something along the lines of a variable, which happens to be log y, is equal to a constant, which happens to be log of the original a, plus log b, or some other constant, times x, which is your variable. And so, yet again, we have a linear relationship between x and log of y. So instead of graphing log x versus log y, like in the last one, because it's a different type of function, you're just graphing x versus the natural log of y. And you'll end up with a linear relationship between those two variables, if you started out with an exponential function or an exponential pattern. Now keep in mind most of these are going to be predictions so instead of it being y it's going to be y hat um, or the natural log of y hat. Okay um, so just keep that in mind as you go. Um, but the most mm, the question that you're going to be asked likely is predict um, something using the line of best fit after you've transformed it. And the question is, right, once you have gotten your answer um, using your new line of best fit, which is going to have logs in it, likely, um, you're going to need to transform it back to the original um, to the original unit. So in order to do that, if you have the natural log of y equals a number, like 5, for example, just undo the log, right? Just how you know how to deal with logs already, hopefully. Remember this is log base e, roll the log, e to the fifth equals y, right? And so your actual predicted y value is going to be 
e to the fifth, or if it was log base 10, it's going to be 10 to the fifth. Okay, so for the example problem, it says using the data from above, transform the data to a linear model and predict what the volume of a ball with diameter of exactly six centimeters will be. Um, and I said to do this both ways just so that you get a feel for the, the root versus the log. Um, and so in order to do this, you need to have that data in your calculator. So go ahead, plug it in. Okay, so if you take a look, um, I've entered the data into um, list one and list two. My x values are in list one, y values are in list two. Um, this is my my scatter plot of the data, which should match up to the graph that I have on um, on my sheet. Okay, but we want to transform it, and we think that it's a cubic relationship, and so we want to plot x cubed versus y. Um, and so I want to go back to my stat to my um, to my lists. And in list three, I want to make a new X column. And so it's going to be um, my list one, L1, to the third power. Um, and then it'll fill in with all of the third powers. And then we can make a, a scatter plot of that. So my X values, instead of list one, which is just X, I want to actually plot my list three, which is my... Um, my set of x cubed values and so I can then plot that. And look at how cool! That is totally a linear relationship. Okay, so then you find the line of best fit which is with your stat calc lin reg um, and remember we want to be, we're doing um, our x values are list 3, our y values are list 2. Um, let's store a regression equation in y1 because we want to actually plot that and then we can calculate it and we can graph it. So let's go back to the graph. That's our line of best fit. And hey, look at that. Pretty darn cool. Okay, graphing x cubed versus y. Now we have our line of best fit, which um, if you look at our calculator, y equals ax plus b, so a is our slope. We have the function y equals 0.5237 approximately times x plus b, which is negative 0.4385, rounding. Um, and so then we can make our prediction. This is a y hat because it's a prediction. Um, and the other thing you have to remember is that this x is not actually x. It's x cubed, right? So you might want to actually include that x cubed there so that you know that whatever your x value is, you have to cube it. And so then if you plug in 6 for your x cubed, um, you have y hat equals um, 0.5237 times 6 cubed minus 0.4385. Actually plugging this into your calculator, you get y hat is approximately 112. 0.68 centimeters cubed as your prediction. And so that would be your answer because um, that was your transformation. All right, cool. Now if we do it with logs, we have a different setup. Now if you know it's a power function, x to a power, right, then you want to be graphing log x versus log y. Um, and in this case, we do know that that's the scenario. Um, but if it was exponential growth or exponential decay or anything, um, you would be graphing uh, just log of y versus x. Um, so in this case, let's actually do that. Let's plug those into our calculator. So now we want to graph um, the log of list 1 and the log of list 2. So I'm going to go up and do, um, I'm going to do the natural log of list 1 and do the same thing for list 2 and then graph those. So uh, go to your stat plot second y equals, and we want to be plotting um, list 3 versus list 4. Look at that, we have a lovely linear relationship. Now you can find the line of best fit using uh, stat calc, one, um, and then lin reg, and we get this for our line of best fit. So then to plug those values in, and remember I didn't actually graph y and x, I graphed log of y and log of x. Um, and then we can just plug in x to get our prediction. So plugging 6 in for x, I get the natural log of y equals 4.6185. Then I do e to the 4.6 power to get 
um, the predicted y hat. And it's slightly different because it's a different model, but it's still a prediction.